The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me. What did Isaiah mean when he said that? The Spirit is on me. And out in that Judean wilderness, as John was washing people up in the Jordan River, he said, I'm not the main attraction, but one more powerful than I is coming. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In our second reading today from Thessalonians, we are admonished, encouraged, we're told to not quench the Spirit. Why all this Holy Spirit talk? Especially now in this season when we're getting ready, and we've got three candles lit, almost four, for the birth of Jesus. You know, this the Spirit, huh? even now, in Advent, is a key player in the story. Why, remember when the angel Gabriel appeared to the Virgin Mary, right? And, and she asked him, well, how is this, how is this pregnancy going to work out? How is this going to work? And, and the, remember how the angel answered her. The Holy Spirit will bring about this miraculous conception. That's right, the Spirit Again and again and again, the Spirit is there as Jesus is baptized. He descends on him and leads him out into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. As Jesus returns then back to his hometown of Nazareth, he quotes these very words of Isaiah yet again. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me. Now, we know a lot about Jesus, right? It's, his story is well documented in the scriptures. And, and we can understand, we get the idea of a heavenly father, but the Holy Spirit is quite a mystery to most of us. I mean, what, what, what is he doing in and with us in, in a very personal and intimate way? It's, it's hard to really pin down. You know, is he the one who's, who's creating in you that, that sense of, of God's presence is he the one giving you that, that certainty and assurance that your faith is real and it's there? I mean, is, 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 is that him? And is, is he still at work doing miraculous things like healing people and prophecy and that we're told not to treat with contempt and, and, and tongues? Paul says, I wished you would all speak in tongues. Is he there uh, still giving gifts to the community of faith, you and me, to build one another up as we do our very practical services in each of our callings? The answer to each one of those, yes, 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 and yes. And yet if the Spirit is just with us in this 24-7 experience called our life, how come we're so much in the dark and clueless when we hear things like, well, to walk in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit, don't grieve the Holy Spirit, don't quench the Spirit? Do we have really any idea what that means? So, so what is, what's your experience and knowledge and Encounter with the Holy Spirit in your personal daily life. I would suggest that most of us fall into one of two camps. We're either in the, the zap camp or we're in the, uh, no, I got this group. So which are you? Are you in the zap camp? Or the I got you? I, I got this group. And you're thinking, well, wait a minute, what's the zap camp, right? Okay, maybe I am, I just don't know it. Okay, well, the zap is just kind of like what it sounds like. You know, zap, boom, bam, you know, that's, that's how the spirit works. It's just boom, you know, you're just there and you get it, you know, and, and wow, and, and you're just, you now have this amazing faith. All doubts just disappear and you're a rock of faith for everyone and, and you, you zapped with, with love for people, you know, and you're a kinder and gentler person and patient and self-controlled and, and zap, you know, you got this love for God and your, your sin struggle is just, just an easy and light burden. Now there's just joy and peace. And, and yeah, this, it's just, you, you can't explain it. You, you can't, you don't even know when it's going to happen. Just boom, you know, and there it is. The spirit zaps. 
Well, I, I, I know that God can work that way. You know, you think about Paul. He was quite literally zapped by the uh, encounter with the resurrected and living Jesus on the road to Damascus, right? I mean, his life was completely changed and different from that moment on. And it's also well documented in the scriptures and people's experiences of being instantly healed by God. And maybe you've had this personal experience too of just having an, a, a wash over you of peace and joy. Maybe you even have your own miracle stories. I don't know. I'm just saying that God can and does work that way, but not normally. In fact, it's pretty rare. In fact, most people are like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> what? That doesn't sound Lutheran. Okay. No. Okay. I get that. Sure, but it, it, it's documented, so we at least have to admit that point in the scriptures. Um, but it's, it's really probably not something that you experience quite often because God really doesn't seem to be doing it often. But don't feel too left out because there's a downside to the zap camp. And that if you've been zapped and you know who you are, you know you want it again because it was an instant fix from suffering, pain, and loss. It's like, yes, please. And so you find yourself kind of pleading with God. Oh, come on, you know, more zapping, please. And, and yeah, I'm ready. And, and, and you kind of find yourself being like a slot machine gambler. You know, you're just pulling on that arm of prayer. You're hoping because occasionally there's a payout. You know, and, but you will find that 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 leads to a very great disappointment. You know, well, God, why aren't you doing it now? And, and, and a disillusionment. Well, you, you've healed others. Why? Why not me? It's just too random to really to count on and put your faith in that it's going to happen. And so, it, it, quite honestly, it leads to a, a distancing of yourself from God. And... And, you know, God's just going to do what he's going to do. I'm really not a part or a partner in it. He just zaps people. It, it leads us then to the, the other group. You know, the, the I got this group. Now, now, these are very orthodox, good Christian folks. They believe that the Holy Spirit is real and true. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, yes. They just don't expect him to show up and do anything. You know, I mean, he's there, but he... he you know, I, I got this. You know, if, if we're asked to grow and mature in our faith and life with God, well, they, they go to work and do it. You know, they, they put their effort and willpower into it. And yeah, and, and, and the problem is when you really read the Bible, you know, and you really dig into it, it's really hard to do everything prescribed. You know, like uh, rejoice always. Uh, pray. Pray. Continually uh, give thanks in all circumstances. And don't even get me started on that Sermon on the Mount with turn the other cheek and love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you and be perfect as your Heavenly Father is perfect. Yeah, I got this. Right. Okay, maybe not. And so most kind of end up just reducing it down to something a little more manageable like going to church. You know, maybe downloading a, a Bible verse app on your phone. Every day it pops up a new verse for me. Or maybe, you know, we're, we're going to uh, listen to some Christian music on the radio while we're driving to work. And, and, and certainly saying grace before we eat. Come on, you Philistines. And, and yeah, we're, so yeah, I got this. But real deep change in the soul where you really can rejoice even in the hardest, most bitter disappointments. Where you've got this, this confidence that, that you need to talk to God because you just love Him so much and you have to be in this conversation in prayer and, and you've got this rock-solid faith that can handle really hard things of life and tough questions from people who are of different faiths or of no faiths at all or any, any kind of scientific, uh, you know, revelations like, oh, wait a minute, 
God's in charge of all of this. However, and whatever's been discovered, it's going to fit into his creation. And, and, and you find that, that, that you're moving beyond simply serving your own selfish needs and, and you find yourself where my things and my money aren't my own. See, this kind of being sanctified through and through is really beyond the I got this group. And quite honestly, the downside of this group is that you will burn yourself out. You will be exhausted trying to really do everything that's prescribed. And <laughs> you'll be mad at most everyone else who isn't trying at least as hard as you are. So, what's left? I mean, if God... Is the zap thing isn't like you can count on it and you really can't work hard enough. What's left? Now, I'm just a little hesitant to tell you because I'm afraid that you'll just dismiss it. You'll just go, oh, I heard it. I heard it a long time ago. I, okay. No, so I really want you to give it some thought. I really want you to give it a second hearing. Okay, I'm going to tell you now. Grace. Grace, where you've been invited into this personal, interactive, give and take relationship of love with God. He's just invited you into this. And, and you're, you have a part and a partnership in that relationship. You're not just being zapped. You're welcomed by God. And then all of this has been initiated and sustained by the Holy Spirit with the Father who gave His Son, with the Son, Jesus, who gave His life. The Spirit then giving you faith to believe that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are living in you, not far away, but they are near to you. Not randomly zapping you whenever they feel like it, but you're in a conversation with them so that when and where, you, you see it coming, all right? And, and then when it doesn't, you're like, oh, they must have something better in mind. They haven't just sent you out on a raft to figure it out, but on your own strength and abilities, but now you've got the God who created the universe and sustains it as your power source, as the one who loves you. The one who hung on a cross and said, I got this for you. So when you hear the phrase, don't quench the spirit, it's this relationship of grace, of love, of part and partnership with the living God. That's what it looks like on his end. What, what's it look like on ours? You know, how do you practically live this out? And you talk to him. Continually. Which means you also listen every day. Talking and listening. And then you do stuff together. Right? That's how relationships grow. And, and so most of that stuff you're doing together is at your work or your retirement. I mean, whatever you're doing, it's not here. It's in your regular life. And so in this talking and listening to God, you're asking him, well, what are you up to? What are you doing today that I get to join in with you? Who are you? Who are you messing with that I might be able to have a conversation with about you? Who can I bless just simply with mercy and kindness? Since my time and my money are no longer my own, but all of my resources are in this partnership. I'm all in, you're all in, obviously, as I look at the cross. And then there, there's the, the talking and listening and what are we doing together. And then there's a thankfulness, a rejoicing. And, and this thankfulness really has to be cultivated. This really, really is something that you have to do. It just won't happen by itself. This gratitude that you have for God in just the simple everyday things that you have a home and a body and health and strength and family and food. And, and here's the thing that makes it different than just being thankful. 
You'll know that it's an effort when you're thankful for the hard stuff because you know with the God-given faith that God is shaping and forming you into a person of great character, of great faith, of great sacrifice and love just like his son Jesus who gave it up all for you. And then you'll find that you are indeed able to then do away with and deny the, the bad and embrace the good. Knowing this whole time that, that God himself, the God of peace, he answers this prayer. He will sanctify you through and through in this grace partnership. He will then, in your spirit, body, and soul, keep you blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is faithful. He will do this in you. Amen. And amen. I invite you to stand. Oops. And then we confess our faith with the words of the apostles.